from capital appreciation is exempt from state and local taxes, but notice what kind of taxes it's not exempt from federal taxes. Treasury notes and treasury bonds are coupon bonds. The principal difference between the two is that treasury notes have maturities up to 10 years. Treasury bonds have initial maturities longer than 10 years. So again, coupon bonds, the payments are semi-annual, which is what we've talked about before. Again, maturity is up to 10 years. Face value, $1,000. And the treasury bonds, longer maturity. So, in the uh, figure at the bottom of page one, we have some representative treasury listings. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Again, the issue with uh, the Wall Street Journal is you need a subscription, even online. So, uh, this, is, this is back when the Wall Street Journal print edition used to have uh, actual bond listings, but anyway, not to go on about that too much. Just to talk a little bit about what's being shown in this quotation, this first column that says rate, this is the coupon rate, and this is in percent, even though it doesn't say that. I guess if you're reading the Wall Street Journal, you're supposed to know that, bless you. The prices, notice it says, Colons in bid and ask quotes represent 30 seconds. So 101 colon 01 means, <coughs> bless you, 101 and 132nd. These have shorter maturities and they are treasury notes. These are treasury bonds. And uh, the uh, face value here, the face quote, equals 100. And we'll talk about why that is in a second. But these bonds are selling at a discount because the quote is less than 100. These bonds have prices that are quoted at more than 100. Does anybody know what that's called? It's a premium. Because it's greater than 100. Discounts less than 100. All right, finally, this last column that says ask yield, we're also going to talk about something for test three called the yield to maturity. And that's what this is. This is the best measure of what the bond is actually paying on an annual basis, taking both the coupon rate and the market price into account. So notice, I mean, think about being able to buy a government bond paying you 12%. That would be something. I mean, this is extremely safe, but notice that's why the price is so high. Once the price is taken into account, they all are pretty much in the same ballpark. Okay. So we're going to talk about this bid-ask price later, but as we saw, there were two prices for each bond. 
So that's treasury issues. There are also federal agency issues. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHLB, Ginnie Mae, etc. This was part of the um, part of the problem back in 2008 and 2009. All of the mortgage debt was being insured by these federal agencies and then when it turned out to be basically worthless, the federal government ended, ended up bailing out Ginnie Mae and Fannie Mae and so on. All right, then we have debt issued by state and local governments. These are referred to as unis municipalities, sorry, munis, and a very important uh, attribute of this debt is that it's tax exempt, the interest is tax exempt at the federal level and may be at the state and local levels as well. For example, if you were to buy, if you were a Louisiana resident and you buy Louisiana municipal debt, it is in fact what's called triple tax exempt. It's, ta it's tax exempt at the federal level, the state level, and the local level. Then finally, we have debt issued by corporation. Now you'll notice I've got a list here of six, yes, six characteristics. And what I'm going to write next to this is compare to equity characteristics <coughs> lesson in lecture note number seven. And the equity characteristics in lecture note seven are listed in the same order, but they're contrasting. So what I'm going to do is underline the part that's the most different between the two. So for example, Holders of the firm's debt, and that's bonds, are creditors to the firm. That means they expect to be repaid. The contrasting equity characteristic is going to say that holders of the firm's equity are owners. So owners versus creditors. Debt obligations have a specific maturity which is stated in the bond contract. This contract is also referred to as an indenture. And if you remember your colonial history, that word kind of may remind you of something called indentured servants. Remember hearing about that? Poor people would have rich people pay their passage to the new world and then they would owe them seven years of servitude or whatever the contract stated. Interest payments on debt are tax deductible. They represent a legal obligation typically paid semi-annually. The dividends that are paid on stock are not a legal obligation. They are decided upon by the Board of Directors, and they are not tax deductible. Dividends are typically paid quarterly instead of semi-annually. Debt holders do not have voting rights. That 